I'm gonna save. And it is 3.30, so I now officially call this meeting to order. And I'm just going to call it the roll and see who's here. Okay. Um, Emmanuel. Yeah. Awesome. Um, Alyssa. Here. Thank you. Lauren. Here. Megan. Here. Nick. Here. Summer. Here. Uma. Here. Yana. Here. Awesome. Anthony. Sorry, here. Awesome. Um, Maggie. Here. Jenna. Here. Amelia. Amelia, not here. Okay. Um, Ollie. Here. And Thomas. Here. Awesome. It's great to see you all here. And is there anyone from public here wishing to speak? Seeing none, we'll move on. And Anthony, minutes from last meeting. Wonderful. I'm sorry. I'll just uh, I'm gonna pull them up real quick. Sorry, I got that, but I have them. You're good. So. So um, last meeting, of course, which was last year, which is crazy to think of, uh, we sort of just had a quick check-in, uh, which was followed by um, sort of a discussion about um, mental health, which is sort of like our next uh, major initiative past the um, Warrior logo. Um, <clears throat> Lauren, Alyssa, and I were able to have a meeting with um, Ms. Burns, who um, had a lot of um, psychology groups at Wakefield High School. She was a former uh, guidance counselor um, uh, in, the, in the guidance department. And um, we had a really great discussion about how that meeting went and uh, what to do going forward with uh, distributing a survey to um, middle school and um, high school students and elementary students, school students as well. Uh, we also had a um, discussion about um, possibly creating um, some more subcommittees to better be able to um, sort of uh, divide and conquer in a sense with uh, uh, our work sort of uh, becoming more intricate and complex. Uh, and we also had a wonderful presentation from um, Summer and Maggie about uh, Invention Wakefield and Safe Routes uh, to School, uh, sort of explaining what uh, Invention Wakefield is sort of all about and what um, the new uh, sort of um, road planning will look like uh, going forward. And we had an update from uh, the outreach subcommittee um, about sort of just how um, we could further enhance our communication. And uh, that was about it. Thank you, Anthony. Do I hear a motion to accept the minutes? I accept. Thank you, Yana, here a second. I second. I second. Thank you, Uma. I will not call the roll. Emmanuel. So you say, you say yes. <laughs> awesome, thank you, Emmanuel. Alyssa? Yes. Lauren? Yes. Megan? Yes. Nick? Yes. Summer? Yes. Uma? Yes. Yana? Yes. Maggie? Yes. Jenna? Yes. William? Yes. Awesome, thank you. Motion passes, mission accepted. So how's everyone's break? Let's do a quick update. How's everyone's like, life doing? Like, how's everyone feeling, you know? Anyone wanna talk? See what, like, what you guys do? So someone give me an update of what they did. I'm doing pretty well. The break gave me time to catch up on my sleep, which is nice. Yes, I need, I got some much needed sleep. I slept for like 14 hours one day. It was, it was a great sleep. 
Uh, <laughs> how are other people? I didn't do too much, but uh, my family was able to see a uh, really cool, like nationally known uh, Christmas lights um, display in Wilmington, which was like really cool to see. It was like really extravagant. Yeah, I saw that too. Um, it was pretty cool. And then I didn't really do anything. We did like this um, thing for New Year's Eve where we wrote like little notes throughout the week about one and you would put it in two different piles. One pile was like things you were thankful for in 2020. And then one of them was like things you hated in t about 2020. And then on New Year's Eve, we, lit, we did a fire and then we burned them all. It was pretty fun. And then um, I just texted Amelia and she said she's coming in, but she thought it was later. So. Oh, okay, cool. Um, Anthony, um, I didn't call William, but he is here. So if you want to make sure you're on the tennis, great. I'm sorry, William, I, I missed you. Yeah, so how was everyone else's week? I know I slept, I did some work, I wrote some essays. That was pretty much it. Um, what else? Did anyone get any cool Christmas gifts? Same with thing. And we went on vacation, go skiing. I watched a lot of Netflix, I'll be the first to say. Um, if anyone is interested in like kind of like crime ish shows, I watched uh, The Trials of Aaron Hernandez. It was really good. Um, and I also started reading a book uh, called White Fragility, and it talks about um, how it's kind of hard for white people to talk about racism, and I would highly recommend it. I haven't finished it yet, but it is very good. Yes. Oh, well, one of my goals in 2020, 2021 is to start reading more for fun, because I've not read for fun since like freshman year of high school, and I'm almost freshman in college, so I'm going to try to read for fun more. Okay, anyone else any fun? Any more life updates? Oh, so I was just to say, you mentioned Christmas gifts, and I, I don't know if this is exactly extravagant, but I did get a pencil sharpener, which I've been really wanting because I'm home more often. So like, and I don't like mechanical pencils. I just can't write with them. So like, <laughs> I was so super stoked to have a, a pencil sharpener now. Yeah. I got a pencil noticed, sharpener too. I love pencil sharpeners. I noticed every year I've gone older, the more and more I get excited for socks for Christmas. I got like two, they got like two things of socks for Christmas and I was so excited. I need new socks so that was it was a great Christmas um, speaking of reading for fun um I got a bunch of new books before Christmas break and then I got a bunch of new books after Christmas break because I finished all the Christmas break books wow um and I've been reading a lot during quarantine because I've literally nothing better to do so I highly recommend taking up reading for fun because if you find a book that like you really like it passes so much time because I read 32 books over the summer and then I read um four books over Christmas break and then I just got two new books and I I'm I finished one of them and I almost finished one of them but it passes a lot of time and it's just fun because you like don't focus on anything besides the book which I think is very helpful if you're like stressed so highly recommend taking up reading for fun that is a lot of books. Yeah, I really need to start reading for fun. I basically just been reading Shakespeare for four years. I need to go back to reading for fun. Okay. Um, Emmanuel, we can we can hear you a little bit. Um, but you're 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 okay. Okay, Lauren, you had a call with um the guidance counselor from high school, I think, Mr. Peavy. Do you want to like give us updates? So it was actually so he it was more around the mascot. I mean the logo. Sorry. Um. But before I get into that, can I motion to add something to the agenda? Just yes. kind of while we're talking. Uh, I'd like to motion for us just to have a little bit of time to talk about the events that happened uh, at the Capitol building uh, a few days ago. I think that our, our group is in a really unique position where we're able to share our opinions and, you know, have them and our feelings and have them be valid. Um, so I would just like to motion to have a little bit of time for us to kind of debrief and talk about that if yeah. people are good with that. Is there, is, do, I have, do I hear a second on that motion? I motion it. I second. Thank you, Yana. Okay, we will vote on Lauren's motion. Manuela? Yes. I hear see a thumbs up. Alyssa? Yes. Lauren? Yes. Megan? Yeah. Nick? Yes. Summer? Yes. Uma? Yes. Yana? Yes. Maggie? 
Yes. Jenna. Yes. William. Yes. This motion clearly passes. So for this, I do think we should avoid anything political to talking about how everyone's feeling because it's a pretty traumatic event. Um, there was an attempted overthrow of the US government. So I think we should avoid like taking political stances, but just feeling how everyone's feeling about it. That is a very large event in our lives. So like, obviously like, I'm pretty shocked about it. And, and a lot of people in my school are in, in town too. It's pretty jarring and see how fragile our government can actually be. So like feelings on that, how people, because I know it is really traumatic. Yeah, I mean, I think before, you know, we kind of go further, I just want to make sure that everyone knows that since it was such kind of, you know, it was a huge event, whatever you're feeling is valid, like if you're confused, if you're angry, if, you know, you don't really know how to feel like that's all valid. I know for me personally, I was, um, I was watching them count the electoral votes and I kind of saw it unfold and it was, it was pretty scary. Um, I think I'm definitely, you know, I wish it didn't have to get to that point, um, but I think it kind of shows the strength of, you know, our country and our system that we were able to continue uh, pretty strongly with, you know, what we were doing before that all happened. Yeah, does anyone have any other feelings about it? Just open discussion, how's everyone feeling? Because like I said, it's a really- Can I uh, say something? Yeah, go ahead. I saw this image with this guy with the Confederate flag in the Capitol. I saw that as really offensive because um, throughout the Civil War, the Confederates never made it into the Capitol. And this guy did make it into the Capitol. I mean, the Confederate flag is a simple, I mean, um, symbol of racism, slavery, secession, breakup of the United States. And that's just awful. Totally. Yeah. I, in A pushes here, we were talking a lot about just, we were, they would focus a lot on like history from the bottom and how these symbols kind of reflect use history and stuff. I think it's really interesting thinking about that. Um, anyone else have any feelings on it? I just, I'm not trying to be like rude or political at all, but I'm just confused on what they thought was okay about this like I'm confused on what their goal of this was like I'm confused on why they thought it was okay to storm the capital I'm very confused well I think that people have a lot of feelings and people get very attached to leaders and I don't know what they thought their eventual goal was no one really knows until we get people on the stand to confess but I think overall, people are really angry and they have the right to be angry, but violence never is the answer. Uh, if anyone else has, answer, has any thoughts on Maggie's question. Yeah, people just get very angry and that they have the right to be angry, but they don't have the right to be violent. Yeah, and just, you know, it's really, you guys are part of local government. So you, you know, you're definitely um, part of the system and, and kind of having that, op, you know, can be really jarring knowing that, uh, you know, it's, it's still hard for me to <laughs> put into words because we've never seen anything like this happen. But yeah. I'm glad that you guys are bringing it up because you are part of uh, local government and um, body that is required to kind of follow along protocols that have been put in place to protect the, you know, the town and, and institutions and. Anthony, is there a head your hand raised? Yeah, I was just going to say, I think to answer that question in the best way possible, it comes from lack of trust. It comes from a, just a lack of trust in um, what the truth is and what in, uh, the the actual information out there is. Um, information, it doesn't seem like anymore, is not just plainly um, uh, in one form. It's in multiple different interpretations that 
have many different implications. Uh, and I think that is what um, this can all derive from. Totally. Yes, there's a large lack of trust in this country and it's gonna be our job as young people to fix that. And I think just hearing from all you guys, I know that we definitely have the ability to do that. And that's, that makes me hopeful for the future just seeing that we have young leaders who are able to hopefully mend the almost amendable um, trust issues in this country. And um, un, like un, distrust in the government, distrust in the media, just distrust in the US as a whole. So any other thoughts, questions, feelings? Um, my family was pretty worried because my cousin, Sarah, works for Senator Murphy and she lives in Washington. So that's what we were mainly focused on. We were scared for her, but she's okay. She's yeah. Out, so. Totally, yeah, it, it really scary. My friend, She's a floor intern in the Senate, and she was the person who got the electoral votes out before the people um, came into the Senate chamber. And that was, it's, it's really scary. And I know people on Senator's staff, and it's just really scary that these people were able to come in and threaten their lives. It's really, it's really, really scary. And they didn't sign up to that. They signed up to serve the people, not to risk their lives. Um, I know that, you know, it didn't directly come out of this event, but one thing that I'm hoping does change is, you know, maybe they start thinking about the reality that we face as students and as teachers of that happening in school. Um, and I think that we're really lucky to live in a, in a pretty safe town. Um, but, you know, oh geez, I just hit the table. Um, I'm hoping that, you know, maybe if something good does come out of this, that it can be, you know, maybe they're rethinking gun laws or the way we kind of go about these situations at different times in our lives um, when, we're, when we're vulnerable, but we shouldn't be. Um, so I'm hoping that, you know, they can think about that. Yes. We've all gone through many lockdown drills and they're very scary. And I remember like running zigzags and all that right into the field. That's, it's awful. So hopefully if something ever good comes out of this, they will see how our daily lives are as students in this country. Anything else on this topic? Okay, are there any other motions? I know some of the people want to ask such the agenda because if you can put that on there now. Um, no? Okay, we can come back to later if anyone has a motion to add stuff to the agenda. Lauren, mascot updates, what's up? Yeah, so the uh, myself, Ali, Anthony, Alyssa, and Catherine um, as the subcommittee, we met with Mr. Pavey, who, Catherine, is he the history curriculum coordinator? Is that his title? I think, or maybe yeah, the- The social- Social Studies and History Curriculum okay. Center for the for five through twelve. Yeah, um, thank you. So we met with him um, because he is also a co-teacher of the diversity program at the high school, um, and they have been focusing a lot on um, kind of the education piece that we did a little bit of uh, with the logo and how it's harmful. Um, we're also really lucky to have him because. He's also a basketball coach and the logo obviously impacts a lot of the sports teams and kind of things like that. Uh, and so we got some insight that um, for those of us that are in favor of uh, changing the logo that they have started kind of phasing out the old one and uh, putting in a new one to their new um, like kind of sports gear. I know most of the uniforms don't have the traditional warrior head that you know, we're not huge fans of, um, but it's, he said that it's similar to the, the new one is similar to the Ohio State logo, if you want to look that up. So it's just a W and it says uh, Warriors on it, I believe. Um, so we're pretty pleased to hear that those steps have, are being taken um, after all of our really hard work. Um, and then we also talked about maybe having our council collaborate with the diversity leaders 
Um, so this year, the leaders are kind of focusing on creating a little bit of curriculum and some lessons um, to implicate into classes for next year. And one of those that they focused on in November was the history um, and treatment of indigenous people. So we're hoping that, you know, maybe sometime soon, it might be next year that we can collaborate with them and go into some classes, however, you know, that might look if it's over Zoom or in person um, at the high school as well as the middle school, because we know that, you know, as all of us get older, you know, the middle schoolers are gonna be moving on to the high school. So it does impact them as well. Um, I don't know if I miss anything that we talked about that anyone wants to add, but I believe that was it. Um, and we're gonna be in touch with him um, as we do some more work. So, yeah. Yeah, thank you. Uh, they, they don't have any questions for Lauren, because I have one. Yana? Um, I just wanted to add something. I did notice the new logo with my hockey gear. We were like getting new sweatshirts and jackets and it's the new logo. So that was a good thing to see. That's great. <laughs> Yes, I, I've heard that they're trying to subtly phase out the um, old logo. But Lauren, um, what do we think about, I think we need to do like a second wave of pressure on the school committee to get kind of moving. Cause I know they've been, I know they've been doing COVID and stuff, but I, I don't know what we think about kind of pressuring them again, getting on another meeting and asking them to make some changes. I, I think that this could be our really big thing of the year if we want to get it done. So I don't know. Yeah. I mean, I, right. I personally haven't thought like too deep into that just because I know, especially where cases are climbing a lot right now, particularly in Wakefield. Um, so I know, you know, it, it is a super important issue and I, you know, and I think that they know that as well. Um, but obviously like our health and safety you know, have to come before that. Catherine, do you have any thoughts about that? If we should reach out to them or maybe wait a little bit? Um, I mean, I think you can, who are our liaisons to the school committee? Lauren and Jenna? Okay, so, I mean, you could just say, um, if, um, just you could do a follow-up and say, we wanted to let you know, we met with Mr. Pavey here are some things we're going to be working with the diversity leaders. We're also hoping to go into the middle school. Um, what are those classes called in, in, in um, the I care? I care. Yeah. And, and just kind of just follow up so that you're on their radar. Um, because, yeah, I, working in the health department, we I know that they're in, um, it's pretty straight out with cases and everything. So um, I think that would be a Good strategy. What do others think? Yeah, I think that's fine. I, I just want to make sure that they know that we're there. We're not going to just going to back off. Yeah, and I think that's a you know, in just just in government, sometimes people are thinking about it, but just kind of that subtle reminder and, and just kind of saying this is where we're at and we've made these steps. They'll be thrilled to hear that, I'm sure. Um, and the other thing too is if um, I know the folks that are going to be, be taking this to the next step might want to have an idea of those of you that might be interested in going to some of those middle school eye care classes and doing some presentations. So how would you like to find out Lauren and Alyssa who's interested in that? Um, I can, if Lauren and Alyssa, you want to send a Google form, I can send it out on our email list and we can see who wants, who's interested. But do we know like what time those are and like when they are like, do we like, is it like it's like in the morning? Hey, Jenna, your middle schoolers? Yeah, they're just like a regular period during the day. Cool, cool. Okay. Yeah. So awesome. what yeah, once they once you get this find out who's interested, then we could get the schedule and plug people in because that if you're on an if you're a high schooler and you're on an asynchronous day. Um, and then as far as our middle schoolers go, you know, you guys could look at the schedule too to see if that could work. Catherine, do you know if I would be allowed in the school just because I don't, not in the school district? Um, well, to do the presentations, they'll probably be via Zoom anyway. So, okay. so what, what we had 
briefly talked about was maybe taking what the some of the the social media and presentations that have been done but thinking about ways to make them more interactive and i think that's where our middle schoolers can help a lot um how would this how would they want to be educated about this topic cool. and make, make it fun but um but i think that whole you know you are unique because you're a council, but this is an opportunity to do some peer education because they're going to hear. Um, and I think it's important to present both sides too, because not everyone is going to feel um, one way or another way, but just say it's okay to disagree on this issue. Um, we all certainly don't 100% agree. So I think it's important. Totally. Yeah. So I think if we want to schedule a meeting with like the mascot subcommittee, and um, like have middle schoolers, how our, some of our middle school members come and just talk about how we wanted to start those presentations. Lauren, if you want to um, email Sherry and see if we can get a, a Zoom link for probably next week or whatever. And, or yeah, if middle schoolers, that's not like a good idea. Like, um, would you be interested in doing that? Yeah. Sick. Yeah, I think be good. that's a great idea, Catherine. That's, that's exciting. Okay. Um, so I know the past few meetings we've been doing a lot about our mental health like initiative, and I didn't know if anyone wanted to finish up on the discussion we had been having. I think after this, I think we really should start pushing and kind of um, pushing on social media things and stuff. I've seen also do, doing some stuff, but I think we can fully move on through our initiative, like go through it. So anyone have anything to they want to discuss about that and shoot specifically? No, that's okay. Um, okay, new subcommittees. I know Jenna has a proposal ready for us. Um, Jenna, if you would like to do that, that'd be awesome. Sure. So, um, in a world of tough times, um, I think everyone needs a good reminder of some like positive things going on in the world. Um, so I think it'd be a good idea to start a subcommittee, um, like a good news subcommittee. And we could share good news that youth or anybody is doing and the news we broadcasted on Get Up Galvin, um, the local TV station, WCAT, um, social media, or a video message, um, or newspaper, or any other way that the message could get out to people. And um, it's really important to focus on the positives, um, especially in a world where there's so many negatives. So, and I think some people just need a reminder of what those things are. Awesome, thank you, Jenna. I totally agree. I think highlighting young people in the town and highlighting their achievements and just sharing positive vibes is awesome. So. Um, do I hear a motion to create the good news subcommittee? I motion. And Lauren, do I hear a second on that motion? I second. I second. Awesome. Thank you. Um, Emmanuel. Awesome. We got thumbs up from Emmanuel. Alyssa? Yes. Um, Lauren? Yes. Megan? Yeah. Nick? Yes. Summer? Yeah. Uma? Yes. Yana? Yes. Maggie? Yes. Jenna? Yes. And William? Yes. Awesome. So um, how do you think we should go about appointing members? Is anyone interested in doing that with Jenna, um, kind of forming that? Um, I would definitely be into help because I feel like it would be super closely related with kind of like the outreach and I feel like that would probably be a good collaboration to have. Mm -hmm. Totally. Yeah, so I think um, Alyssa, Jenna, I can be happy to go on and help and just 
kind of um, start doing that. Uh, if anyone else is interested in joining, you can email me and we can set up a time to have our first meeting soon-ish. Um, yes. Okay. Any other discussion on this? Great. Communications Outreach Subcommittee. What up? Um, I also wondering about the mental health survey update. What's up with that? Right in. Yes. Um, so over break, mostly I put together a survey for like mental health to see where people are at that we're planning to um, solidify within the next couple of weeks and have that sent out to the high schoolers, to middle schoolers as well. And we've also started putting one together for the all remote students. So it's a little different, more specific to what their experiences have been during the pandemic. And it's just kind of like general mental health questions, like to see how people are doing, to see if the pandemic has like really affected them because I'm sure it has affected some people way more than others. And then in terms of things like academic, if there's challenges that we can potentially advocate for them, on their behalf, like to school officials, to teachers, and anyone else who might be the proper path to go to. And that is pretty much where we are with the survey right now. We have a meeting on Monday, so we're gonna talk about it more then. Awesome. Um, oh, can I just, when, yeah. I'm, I'm sorry, my son walked in, so I got a little distracted. Did you, um, you got the email from Mr. Robinson, right? Yes. Okay. Um, Catherine, that um, person is from Everett that will, um, who emailed us about um, shadowing our meeting. Was that, uh, you remember that? Um, yes. Okay, cool. So I think Alyssa, I think what someone emailed me and Catherine a few days ago, where they asked about like the youth council and stuff because they want to start one in their town. I think that would be cool kind of as like a communications thing where it's like if you were interested in starting a youth council committee in your town come shadow the youth council and like come watch one of our meetings and see what we're doing in wakefield and a really cool way to get more people from out of town seeing this kind of starting this across the state i think that'd be cool yes i agree okay maybe um, we can add it to the agenda monday talk about it a little bit so i'm also thinking about would you know we might want to do two separate meetings just so we don't have a ton of people um but would we want to do that to kind of start the application process for next year um yeah. and we could kind of put the word out to youth in wakefield and say that you know we're having a regular meeting and that they can come to kind of you know see how it all works and see if you know they this might be something they're interested in yeah, I was going to put it later, but I think we are still thinking about the application process for next yeah. year. Sorry, Alyssa. I totally forgot to like motion to add that. Sorry. <laughs> we were good. We, we, we talked about now in your communications update, yes. but uh, I think that we also have to figure out how we're going to appoint members because that was by the town council last year. So I don't know if the town council deal with it or we deal with it. I think it would be reasonable for us to be involved, like whether it's in a joint meeting with the town council or something like that. Because I do think it would be important because they appointed us, but mm -hmm. I can well, so, I can talk to Anne and see. Yeah, can you talk to them and see like what like the um what the charter says and stuff. Right. Yeah. I think we originally thought that the first year that the town council would appoint, and then then yeah, but Alyssa, I want you to run this by Anne, and then then the next year the youth council would make recommendations and that but the town council would officially have to appoint but you all could figure out what is going to be the process because right now you know the process before was just when the order of applications came in which is unfortunate why some of you aren't voting members um so this is might be an opportunity to adapt that so um i do think it's important that we put um, almost like a set, you know, a lot of um, boards and organizations have like a board development team. Um, so I actually think that might be a separate group where you're figuring out, okay, how, because the youth council is so new, how is this going to work? How is it going to be fair? Um, and then, um, and then maybe adapting that. In mm -hmm. 
Yeah, so would it take an amendment to like our charter to add more members and like take away novel members? And, that, and those are great questions for, um, you know, to, to ask some of the town counselors or um, yeah, Mr. Mayor. I can, I'll definitely email in about that mm -hmm. super soon. Okay, awesome. Yeah, so if we actually want to set up a meeting, just like talk about these um, applications next year, we can invite Anne just to, if it so you can invite her so we can yeah, ask her all our questions. Mm -hmm. But would the town manager be helpful there, Catherine? Or like, would it be more so like the town? The town manager? administrator? Yeah. I think start with Ann and then he definitely would be helpful because he and Mr. Uh, Counselor Dombrowski kind of helped get this going. So um, you could just say, you know, find out who would be um, willing to help with this because they, they might have some good ideas. And then you can, I think because it's a youth committee too, you can say, we'd like it to be this way. Um, but I, a lot of times there are interviews involved and I think it would be really good yeah. for you guys to go through that process of interviewing people because, um, I, I, you know, or you might decide, you know what, we want to offer up, you could do a paper application or you could, and you could do a video application or things like, you know, you can mm -hmm. think about different ways to do it. Yeah. And I think all existing members have to reapply if you were, I, I would assume so, right? Because our terms expire in end of June. Okay, yeah, so we can set up a meeting to um, talk about that. We can invite um, Councilor Santos. Um, also, we can, we can email about that and- Yeah, yeah. Cool. I'll keep you updated. Thank you. Um, are there any other update, oh, anything else from communications people? None? Okay, oh, Anthony, I have a question for you. Yes, you already have your hand raised up. I was gonna say that um, the newsletter for uh, November, December, I've been working on it and I'm hoping that by next weekend, um, it can be distributed to um, Wakeville High School uh, parents through Ms. McLeod and also um, the PTO, uh, which worked out really well last time, so. Yeah. That's what I was gonna ask you about. Yeah. Awesome. Wonderful. Very exciting newsletter. Okay. Um, Liaison updates from anyone today. Anyone going to any meetings? No, probably not because we had break and stuff. And like yeah, Anthony, I actually um, I am representing the youth council on the advisory committee, um, which is um, sort of it's a collection of representatives from like many of the major boards and committees in Wakefield, and we um, are meeting with. Um, two uh, members of, two workers from the um, uh, MAPC, I believe, uh, and they uh, work, with, work with 101 um, towns and like municipalities uh, throughout the Metro Boston area to discuss um, sort of uh, engaging with the, um, the communities in those towns and municipalities in order to get um, general input um, of uh, sort of where they're at with general issues or just um, like general topics uh, throughout the town uh, in order to eventually create a mission statement uh, or sort of like a vision statement um, every two to three years. And so I ju just had a meeting with them this Tuesday, uh, which went super well. And um, we sort of were just discussing some introductory stuff about um, how we're going to go about with distributing the surveys. And I think we're going to be planning on having three different public forums. The first I think will be in late February, um, each one. There are 12, it's sort of very interesting. There are 12 different um, topics and like each public forum will assess four different topics. But before any of those forums, we're gonna look, or we're hoping to distribute like a survey to um, everyone, including um, the youth. And so um, if anyone had anything that uh, they wanted to sort of like uh, channel through me to, uh, tell them, uh, by all means, you can do that. Can I just say one thing? First of all, Mr. Mayo came by my office and said how impressed he was with you, Anthony. So um, I think you contributed a lot to that meeting. Thank you. I just want to show you all that this is kind of the purpose of the Youth Council, that you're serving as this body. And a lot of times adults will come and say, Oh, is there someone from the youth council? Because remember, I sent out an email. Is there anyone interested in being part of this? Um, so there are going to be more opportunities like this to get involved in different projects across the town. Um, and it's 
you know, it seems like Anthony, you're learning, already learning a lot from it. So I definitely encourage you to take these chances. Yes, Helen, they're also a great way to build connections with people throughout town government. And that could also help you out in the future. Um, yes, is there anything you need to want Anthony to know? No? Um, if you have anything, you can always email the council email and I'll throw it over to, all over to um, Anthony. Um, okay, any other liaison updates? Yeah, I was going to say, Megan and I created a presentation on our meeting with the SRO at the high school, Officer Malone. So we can share that right now if you want. That'd be great. I think you should, I think you should be able to screen share. Okay, I'll do that. Um, okay, so we had a meeting with the, um, someone part of the police department, and we talked about a lot of different things. We talked about COVID, um, the use of drugs and alcohol, the Black Lives Matter stuff, and yeah, so um, when we talked about COVID, um, we were talking, and he said that it's not a main priority for them to shut down parties right now, but if they get a complaint or they see that a party's big enough, they'll go and shut them down. Um, he said that they're praising kids' car hangouts. He says when he sees kids in parking lots and they're sitting in their own cars, um, they won't shut it down as long as it looks like everyone's having safe, being safe. And he said that's an interesting fix to like the hangout solution for kids. and. Um, he said he really liked how we were um, figuring out how to still be with each other. And he did say that they see a lot of kids in big clusters without masks, but they can't really do anything about it because um, they don't want to risk to get too close for their own safety and they can't really do anything anyway. Um, we also talked about new drivers since um, me and Nick are um, getting our licenses and stuff. So they said that um it's again not a main priority to enforce the jol law if they see kids driving together they normally just let it be um he, he said he doesn't really try to pull over people and check to see if they're still on their jol um there is a police car parked up at the jail lot that watches us drive away with the vote kids to make sure we're driving safe and not speeding down the hill um they say that they don't give speeding tickets to a certain point. If the speed limit's 25 miles per hour and you're going between 25 and 35, they won't normally tag you. And he said that it seems like a, not, a lot of the new drivers are being safe and following the rules. So regarding drugs and alcohol, these are two things that the police department has had to especially keep an eye on when approaching the holiday season and especially approaching New Year's Eve. And Officer Malone noted that if he was on patrol and happened to suspect or see people using these type of substances, but not endangering everyone, just using it for personal use, he won't typically stop and confiscate the substances. But however, if he pulled a driver over and noticed they were clearly intoxicated, these instances are handled very seriously by police. And he specifically shared with us a story of him and how he handled a DUI case recently in the holiday season, right before New Year's Eve. Oh, hold on, I can't, uh, my presentation's frozen. I'm gonna try and fix that right now. I can't switch to the next slide. So good. There we go. Uh, regarding the Black Lives Matter movement, the Wakefield Police Department as a whole has done an exceptional job throughout recent history of responding and dealing with all different forms of calls. Uh, Officer Malone specifically talked about how his officers within the department show up to the scene they are called to and respond to and enact justice slash law and order only based on their assessment of the situation and all officers who are on the scene work conscientiously to do their jobs, which are to keep the peace within society and protect the citizens of Wakefield. And that, that's pretty much it. 
Yeah. Awesome. Thank you, Nick and Megan. Do you have any questions for them? Um, anything for them, their presentation? That was a great presentation. I don't see any hands. Good job, guys. And I wanted to say that I see all you, most of you guys responded onto the survey I sent out. Thank you. And I'm going to like compile a little presentation for next meeting just so we can talk about how we want to go forward with the things, with the things you guys said. Okay. And that pretty much wraps our, our agenda and we just got to figure out a meeting for next time. Uh, let me just pull up the calendar. It's so like we were probably meeting on January 29th. At 3.30, does that work for everyone? Staying with the Friday at 3.30. Okay, let me just put it in the calendar. So no, do, do, do. Okay. Cancel. Great. So January 29th at 3.30, I think is the date. Yes, January 29th. Um, does anyone have any other business they want to talk about? Uh, anything they need to discuss with us? Catherine, do you have anything? Uh, I was just going to see if anyone, I know Emmanuel, Emanuela, were you able to go to your, um, reach out to the housing authority? Did you ever hear from them? I mean, you know, you can, not just typing that in the chat. Um, we can't, we can't hear you, I'm sorry. Um, anyone else? Because uh, I know Emanuela, we might switch her on position. Anyone else having difficulty having um, getting in contact with their liaisons? Okay, that's that's good to know. Catherine, I was wondering if you could just, like talk for like five seconds about like any new COVID information you have in Wakefield. Sure. So um, let's see. It's, you know, as someone mentioned earlier, you know, I'm, I work in the health department. So um, we are kind of the, uh, my boss is the health director and is in charge and works with the Board of Health to make sure um, we are managing the contact tracing with COVID and kind of staying on top of all the statistics coming in. Um, so we'll get the live updates when um, a positive case is in Wakefield. Um, and then our head nurse assigns one of us to do the contact tracing. So as you've heard, the rates are up pretty significantly in Wakefield. Um, so as youth council members, just kind of encouraging your peers to make those good decisions, because there are a lot of um, cases amongst um, kids and teens and 20 somethings that um, are definitely contributing to spread. So we kind of all need to do our part, um, including adults. So it, um, we're just kind of trying to continue to send that message out because the rates are going up. Are um, they the highest they've ever been? Right now, yeah. Yeah. Scary. And you guys know that we have the um, the dashboard on the town website. So you can look at those rates. And then um, we also get the school breakdown um, by what school they're in. Um, and then we have, we probably know there's like lots of sports teams have to quarantine. So I think the superintendent said there are almost 200 students quarantining right now. Um, so it's a lot of people that um, were in close contact. So it does, and it impacts it staffing wise, which why you know, it's hard, you know, when you have a lot of people quarantining, that's why a school might have to go all remote. So um, hopefully this is just the post-holiday surge and the numbers will come back down. So as the COVID crisis has in increased, now all of a sudden we have the vaccine. So now we have the vaccine that started um, being distributed for frontline healthcare workers. And then next week, we're gonna start um, vaccinating all of our first responders, so fire and police. And then the next, so I actually have this little, this is like my Bible, when can I get my vaccine? Cause we get a lot of people calling, when am I on the list? So we have our phase one, our phase two and our phase three. So, um, so right now we're in phase one, part two and moving into phase one, part three, so. 
would um, we be able to get vaccines under 18? I know some, they're not um, clear for people under 16, the Pfizer, right? Right, they're working on, on the vaccine, um, how that's gonna work for people under the age of 18, but that's definitely something that folks um, nationally at the CDC level and then here at DPH are working on um, and figuring out which vaccine, because there are a lot, there are still vaccines in trials that, you know, like Johnson & Johnson, some of those that haven't come online yet. Um, so that'll open up more, but we actually have vaccines sitting in our fridges in um, the Melrose Health Department. So it's here, we're, um, we're gonna, and I'll be actually working a clinic next week to get it, helping get it out. So does any, anyone have any other questions about that? No, awesome. Thank you, Catherine. I was just curious about what's happening in the health department. Okay, so if nothing else, do I hear a motion to close the meeting? I motion. Thank you, Uma, to hear a second that motion. I second. Thank you, Nick, um, Emmanuel. Thumbs up. Okay, awesome. Manuel says yes. Alyssa? Yes. Lauren? Yes. Megan? Yes. Nick? Yes. Summer? Yes. Uma? Yes. Yana? Hey, Yana? Yeah. Uh, Maggie? Maggie? I think Maggie might have left. Um, Jenna? Yeah. And William. Yes. Awesome. The meeting is now closed. It was great seeing you all, and we'll see you in a few weeks. Um, have a great few weeks. Be safe. Stay healthy. Stay warm. See you later. Bye, everyone.